promise is a promise. What's good, sneaker fam? Welcome back to our sneakers. I do want to start off by saying happy Thanksgiving to everybody. I also want to start off by saying thank you guys so much to everybody that subscribed. It really does mean a lot to me. And it means a lot more that it happened on Thanksgiving, which is like, it's a day to give thanks. So it's a day to give thanks to all you guys. Thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. I feel like this channel could have a lot more subscribers. And a fun fact I do want to share with you guys, only 5% of all my viewers are subscribed. So if you're not subscribed and you do view this channel, please just go ahead and hit that subscribe button down in that corner below or if it's in that one. I can't remember exactly which one. Anyways, that's enough talking for today. Let's get on to what you're here for. So basically, I'm going to go through my whole collection. And I'm gonna go through some shoes that have stories, some don't. So I hope you guys really enjoy it. So to start off, you already know everybody has to have those holy grails. So you know what I'm saying? Mind of Calvin Klein's. Now I'm just messing with you guys. These are the real heat right here. All right, for real. So I have these shoes just because back in high school I did have that frat look. So that's what my clothes went with. And then I do have these Calvin Klein's just for like a classy look for when I go to the club or. Any like stylish occasion and you know you gotta have heat on your feet when you mow the lawn so you gotta have those Jesus 12s So a lot of people don't really have those limited shoes because they are hard to get and believe me We all started there So these are basically the shoes I started with before I got any of the other shoes that you're about to see after these I did have these free run 5.0s. I did have these free run 3.0s I did have the free run 2.0s as well as the red Roshi runs and the black Roshi runs and as for Adina's general release shoes I did have these Adidas Boost and then I had these other Adidas. I don't know what they're called, but they're really cheap So I bought them before I showed you those shoes I didn't make that statement to bash on you guys or anybody that has those kind of shoes It's just like to show you guys that it's where you start off and it is possible to get these limited edition shoes Which I will share stories about on how I got them and such. All right, so moving on to the vans I have I do have these Vans Gate Highs and that checkerboard. I did get these back in middle school Which was when I was like that skater boy and I got these not too long ago as you guys may see in my videos I got the Vegeta tan Skate highs, these are really nice. I bought these because I really like tan. It's like one of my favorite colors and I feel like that goes with everything. On to the next shoe, I do have this Puma and Stamp collab. I'm not exactly sure the name of the shoe, but I did pick these up and these do have a lot of meaning to me even though I'm pretty sure they're like a general release or, well they're not general release, but they're not that big. But they are a big shoe to me just because I bought these at Kith New York and that was the first time I ever went and I fell in love with New York overall, especially the Kith store, it's really nice. So if anybody's ever in New York, make sure to go check that store out. Onto my last shoe that is in Nike or Adidas. It is this Ronnie Feig with A6 collab. It is the Sterling colorway and the Gel Light 5s. This shoe has meaning to me just because Ronnie Feig is somebody I look up to as a shoe designer. I wish there was other shoes I can have with him, but unfortunately there's only one for now. Eventually I'll hopefully get more to show you guys. Continuing on with my Nike collection, for basketball I do use these KD6s or 7s. I'm not exactly sure which one they are. I, I do like the shoes for balling just because this part of the shoe does form to your foot with the heat and this part is like a mesh but unfortunately they ripped and you can see the fly wire down there they are kind of comfortable they're not the most comfortable basketball shoe but they work for me especially with air technology it's not too bad for basketball and for any occasion i do play soccer whether it's turf or grass i do use these nike magistas they work pretty well for me except in grass obviously they slip since they're not cleated but it's not really a big problem just because I'm not a huge soccer player. But I do like to have like that soccer shoe just because it's easier to control the ball. Next up in the Nike collection, I do have these Nike Sock Darts. These are the tech fleece version all the way through. And I do like these shoes. I like the way they look on the side. But then when you leave it from the top when you wear it, it does look kind of funky. So that's why I wanted to sell them. But I think I'll just throw them on feet for the rest of this winter when it comes up. And then I'll sell them then. Next up in my Nike collection, I do have these Horachis. Which they are not that much of a comfortable shoe and that's why I wanted to sell them. But they are a really nice shoe. And plus they run half a size small. And when I bought them, it was after the release date. I wasn't able to return them obviously because I already had really worn them. So that's why I decided to sell them. But I think I'm going to keep them in the end. Even though they look a little small on my feet. And last about my Nike collection, I do have these Nike Air Max Zeros. And the reason I like these is because these are Tinker Hatfield's pre-sketch. And they seem special. And I usually like special shoes like that, so that's why I decided to keep these in my collection, even though they are a weird color, which is really hard to rock. Moving on to my Jordan collection, I do have these 5 Lab 3s, and I really do like the shoe. It has a, it's a really nice silhouette. The only problem is the shoe's really bulky, and that's why I was selling them in my past video. But I do like how it has a blue bottom on it, and then it has a reflective upper, and then a black midsole. Really nice touch to the shoe. On to the next Jordan, I do have these Black Toe 1s, which aren't really my favorite out of the 
Jordan 1s that I have just because the leather quality isn't as good as the other two. Which brings me on to my next shoe, which is the Bread 1. I really, 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 really love this shoe, especially the quality on the toe box and the quality right back here on the heel counter. And this shoe means so much to me just because I've been trying to get the shoes for years, for years, for years, for years. And the problem is that I remember one time I had like a bot on Google Chrome or an extension and I had this shoe in cart, but just as I got it in cart, it was around like Christmas time, I think it is. I fell asleep in the chair and then I ended up striking out, which got me so mad. And then when I got the shoe, I was so happy, especially that it's an OG shoe, especially an OG colorway. It means a lot to me. On to the last show of my Jordan collection, I do have the Shattered Backboard ones right here. These are my favorite just because the quality is good on the toe box as well again. And then you have that same piece of leather right here. And honestly, the colorway is not my favorite, but I do love this shoe just because of how sought after it is, especially the inside detail. Where, uh, you can't really see it right now, but you see there's a Shattered Backboard in there. And that detail really kills it. Even though you can't see it, it's really big for me. I am a really big person on little small details in shoes especially. Last but not least, my Adidas collection. And to kick that off, we do have my Alpha Bounce in the Iron Metallic colorway, which I really do like this shoe. The only reason I didn't like it was because if I put it on feet, it doesn't look the same as it would like an Ultra Boost, even though they have the same shape. But now that I see it more, I am starting to like it, and I'm probably going to keep, keep it in my collection instead of selling them. Next, I do have the Adidas Tubular 93 with the OG Upper. And I did like this shoe when I bought it. It was really cheap. It was like 110, 120 bucks. But then I figured out it was kind of bulky when I got it, which got me a little upset. But in the end, I really do like the way this shoe looks from the side and from different angles, which makes me think I'm probably going to keep it in my collection as well. I had to put this shoe next just because it is similar to the 93 OGs. And it is the Tudor Novas in the vintage white colorway. And I really do like this shoe a lot. It's beautiful. I like how, what they did here with the bottom and the outsole. I am showing you guys my shoes from least to favorite. And next is the... Adidas EQT ADV support. I do like this shoe. It is in a triple white colorway. This is the only one I like out of the three just because it is fully triple white except on this little plastic part, but that's fine with me. The shoe sticks out a lot, especially when you have my own feet. And then you do have that green on the inside. Don't know why. The shoes from here on out are my most favorite shoes, which is where I probably rock most of the time. And to start off, you do have the tubular doom in the OG black colorway. This shoe actually has a lot of meaning to me just because I bought this when I was on the Statue of Liberty, which is when they released. And I was so happy I got them just because I knew this shoe would sell out immediately, and it did, just like I predicted. And I was able to get them, and I still have that shoe, which is a shoe that I'll probably never leave my collection. Next up, I do have the same shoe with Doom, except it's in the Special Forces colorway. And this shoe doesn't have that much meaning to me, but I just like the color since it is tan, and you guys know tan is one of my favorite colors, especially in shoes. It matches with everything. To start off the NMD collection, I do have this NMD XR1 in the triple white colorway. Nothing really special, I just bought them off Adidas. Next in the NMD collection, I do have the monochrome pack. I have a black and white. This is all I really need from an NMD collection, except I'm missing the tan ones, which would be really nice to have. So if any of you guys are selling those for a good price, let me know. I will take them off your hands. Moving on to the Ultra Boost of my collection, I do have the original black colorway and the version ones. As you can see, they are worn out, they're dirty. These are my beaters just because these are not hard to find. You can find these anywhere, so in case I do beat them up like I did in this case, I can buy them again for a good price. Next, I do have the triple white Ultra Boost and the version ones, and I love this shoe just because I like triple white, it's pretty clean. Nothing really too special about these off Adidas as well, just like I do with the XR1s. And I hardly wear them, to just try to keep them clean. And from here on out, I do have my top five favorite shoes. Top five, top five, top five. The Ultra Boost in the cream slash chalk colorway. This has to be one of my top five favorite shoes just because I went on missions just to get this shoe. First of all, they had it at some store, I forgot. And then they sold out, and then I waited again until next week. They restocked on them, and I was there as soon as I could be. And I ended up getting a bunch of pairs of them, and I did resell them, except I got my pair, and my boy was able to get his pair. Last but not least, I do have my heat to start off. It is the Yeezy Moon Rocks in the 350 Boost colorway. This is the least favorite out of the three, just because I don't really like them that much, because they look kind of green. And it kind of throws me off, because I wish they were like a really solid gray. But I still have them in my collection, because they are Yeezys, and in the end, they are a clean shoe. You can really wear them with anything. Next up in my heat collection, I do have the Pirate Black. And I really do like this shoe just because it is all black, you can wear it with anything. And the red stitching on the pull tab really makes the shoe pop, even though it's like such a small detail. But like I said, I do love small details. It is a beautiful shoe, which I did pay a lot for, which is like the only downside of it. And it does make me a little upset because I don't like to spend like more than retail on shoes. But then again, when I see these on my feet, let's just say, no regrets. On to the last of the 350, I do have the Tans, the Oxford Tans in the Yeezy 350s. This shoe also sucked paying for it just because I paid a lot more than I thought I was, which was stupid of me because these came out on a website and then I thought they were gonna be for a good price because that's supposedly what they said they were gonna go for. And then they ended up being more expensive, especially with shipping, like their shipping was ridiculous pricing and they lived down in Miami plus taxes. So 
the price went up a lot more than I thought it would. So I ended up paying a lot of money for these shoes. But in the end, it's worth it because it's tan. Like I said, tan is my favorite color for shoes. Beautiful, looks good with anything. And once again, no regrets. Last but not least, a favorite out of my whole collection. It is a Yeezy 350s in the V2 Beluga colorway. This has to be my favorite shoe just because of how much it pops. The gray is a really nice detail, especially with the orange, which what makes it pop. And you do have the SPLY 350, which I don't know what it stands for. And I probably never will because I can't find the answer anywhere. But I didn't even do my research, so I don't know what I'm talking about. And what I like about this shoe a lot is that I was able to get a few pairs of these. And this is probably my most successful shoe, my most successful reselling shoe. Which at the time was a really big moment for me because I was into selling shoes a lot. But now lately, I've just been like letting that go. Anyways, that's pretty much it for my collection. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Our next milestone is 1500, which I know we can make it. You guys have been doing a really good job again. It's your boy, Sneaker Sign Now. Make sure you stay woke. Peace. Redneck.